Okay, I'll go ahead and get started here. I'll introduce myself. I'm Chris Barron and spent the last number of years working on margin management, trying to better understand how cost of production is analyzed and how as producers we make decisions. And I think the biggest thing that we can do to improve our businesses and improve profitability is to assess and analyze how we make decisions, to draw baselines, and then to look at how the decisions we're making, and as we change those decisions, how does that improve our profitability and where can we go with, with understanding that in a better way. So basically what I'd like to do is cover a couple of uh, quick slides, and then I'd like to get into the tool that I call Profit Manager, which I've had available for producers over the last 15 years. Uh, a lot of growers have used this tool, improved decision making, improved marketing, and better understood their cost of production. And so let's go ahead and get started and kind of look at, at how these tools can uh, make us do a little better job. Uh, numbers demonstrate reality. Uh, when you look at uh, the opportunity to understand where you're at, your decisions ultimately uh, end up uh, helping you to, to get where you need to be. Um, looking at hope, a lot of times when the market moves against us and emotion enters into the equation, uh, we start to get real fidgety and may make some decisions that aren't correct. And if we've got the numbers in front of us and, kind, and can kind of think about, you know, what is time giving us, um, how much do we have invested, and, and really know what the numbers are, it can kind of keep those emotions in check. Uh, quality information. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we look at the spreadsheet, but it's very important that if you're going to do this, you definitely want to look at, at getting the accurate numbers into the system. Um, motivation to move. It's interesting. Motivation is driven primarily by pain. Uh, I, I relate it to, to being physically fit. A lot of us wait till we have a heart attack before we exercise. It's kind of the same thing with financials when we uh, are making money and in production agriculture, particularly in the grain uh, area for the last, I would say the last three to five years in grain production, we've done a pretty good job of, of getting through uh, some challenging times, but we've had major opportunities to be profitable. A lot of us, all we've had to do is wake up in the morning and we're making money. And so when the margins begin to tighten, commodity prices get lower, I think this uh, will motivate us when all of a sudden we go from a 30% margin down to a 3% or even a negative margin. So then we're going to want to be looking at these numbers and that's when motivation kicks in. So um, I think it's important too to look at historical information and understand that uh, when you look at the blue line here, this is the season average price. And when you look at the red line, this is the cost of production. And generally the market's job is to bring the price down to the cost of production. And that seems to occur quite often. And a lot of times we'll go for a number of years where the price is actually below what our costs are. And so when we've had the last three to five years, we have a tendency to forget that it's probably going to change again. And we're going to be back into this scenario where uh, our margins are going to be negative potentially. And so we've got to really get a handle on these costs and understand when you look at the last you know, period of time on this chart, it shows about an 11 cent per bushel margin opportunity over this whole over this whole time period, and so the margin's pretty tight. So when the opportunity's there to take advantage of some pretty good profits, uh, you want to know that, and you want to have the uh, discipline to be able to do that. Same thing on the corn. When you look at the at the corn chart. Same thing, you know, we've had the last three to five years where we've had this huge margin opportunity and you go back in history and look, um, kind of the same thing. Um, we spend a lot of time with the price below the cost of production and, and it, you can kind of see the direction we're probably headed here as you take a look at that chart. So what we want to do then is, is ask the question when you look at bushels per acre and how many bushels does it take to produce um, your crop, you want to think in terms of when you look at your land, how many bushels does it take to cover my land rent or my land ownership costs? How many bushels does it take to cover my seed cost? Each of those line items, you definitely want to consider um, what 
are the costs in terms of per bushel uh, is kind of one way to look at it. Another thing that I think is real important, and we'll get into this on the spreadsheet, but I think it's very important that we consider as a percent of cost. Anytime we're doing business and we've got specific line item costs, what is the percent of cost um, relative to that line item? So for example, if you look at land, I've got an example in here of 32%. If that changes from year to year, you definitely want to know <clears throat> that, okay, um, this year it was 30% and next year it's going to be 34% because my landowner is asking for an increase. All of the other line items are only going up 1%. So what's the reason behind that? So you can kind of analyze these percentages. And then one other quick thing too, and I, I'll pick on crop insurance because I think that's a real high value item that we have the opportunity to purchase. As a percent of cost over the last couple of years, the average that I've seen has been right around 3% of the total cost of production to protect as much as 85% of your costs. And so it's a real high value item and so we'll talk more about that when we look at this spreadsheet, but we want to think in terms of, of what kind of value are we getting out of these uh, production costs. Um, and it'll help us do a little bit better job of marketing when we understand the value of each, each uh, investment in terms of cost. Another question I like to ask producers is, what happens when the market goes down 40 cents? We have a government report come out, markets limit down, what did that do to your margin? The challenge is, is most of us as producers don't necessarily know what that did to our margin. I think that's something that we need to know as producers. Um, the price movement is one thing, but you know, costs and understanding uh, where you're at is, is a whole nother topic, and that's what we'll get into with the spreadsheet here. And then the other thing too is you know, when your yield changes 25 bushel one way or the other, say you have a storm event, or uh, you know, dry weather over an extended period of time. Understanding that as those yields change, um, how is that impacting margin rather than just thinking of it in terms of you know, price or yield, thinking in terms of margin all the time. So the, what I like to do, and this is the last slide before we get into the spreadsheet, where I want to point out what I call the, the agricultural profit triangle. And this is primarily geared toward crop production but what happens is we tend to, as producers, focus on one thing at a time. So for example, we may focus on markets um, and just be really honed in on that during a particular time during the year. And, and for a lot of us, that ends up being when we're not in the field, we're focused on that area. Maybe this time of year, or when you get into the, the March, February, March time frame. Um, another area that we tend to focus a lot of time on is as soon as harvest is over, a lot of us in our production agriculture, we spend a lot of time working on input costs, trying to figure out how we get our, our seed costs lower and our fertilizer costs lower and all those things. And that's fine, but if we take our eye off the ball on the marketing department, uh, sometimes we can leave a lot of money on the table. And the same thing with production. On the bottom line, that's yields, that's production, that's the amount of time that we spend in the field. So the question I have for us all to think about is how much time do we spend on each of those components within the triangle, you know, and look at your own operation and, and write that down in terms of percentage. You know, is it a third, a third, a third, or do you spend 90% of your time on production and figuring out how to do yields, you know, and 5% on marketing and 5% on cost, you know, analysis. So I think the best thing we can do for our operations is rather than me giving you advice on how to do that is to understand what you're doing. First of all, draw a baseline and figure out if there's areas that maybe you need some improvement on and then, and then looking at what you need to do for that part. And then understanding that the primary focus is in the center. It's on margins and, and that's what will lead us now into profit manager and uh, understanding the uh, spreadsheet as it relates to having good tools for making good decisions. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to take a kind of a closer look at what Profit Manager is. Um, I first of all want to point out that Profit Manager is a decision tool. It's a tool designed to help you understand where you're at, draw a baseline of understanding within your operation and make decisions based off of your own specific information rather than 
uh, advisory type information and some of those things. Now all those services are very good. You definitely want to you want to tie into a lot of that information whenever you can, but to tie into marketing information, for example, or understanding cost of production, looking at university data, looking at averages, those are all good information sources. But the ability to be successful as we move forward in the future is going to be dependent on your ability to understand your own operation. And as we look at the chart here is to understand again, as I talked about in the introduction of understanding where you're at on your margin, understanding that margin is a moving target and it's tied to about a thousand different components in your business. And so what I'm going to attempt to do here is show you how we can take a fairly complex set of numbers and make them very simplistic to understand. So let's go from that point and first of all what I'd like to have us all look at is the total dollar amount spent. So what we tend to look at is how much are we as a producer writing the check out for? Are we writing the check out for taxes? It's twenty thousand dollars. We're writing out um, a check for interest at the end of the year for thirteen thousand dollars and when we tend to look at these numbers um, we look at how big is the check we write and I'm here to to talk with you today about the understanding that this is probably the last column we want to look at. First of all I think what we want to look at is and we'll start with a three hundred dollar example rent and I know that you know every region so depending on if you're in uh, Nebraska looking at this or if you're in New York or if you're in Missouri or central Illinois or in the middle of Iowa this cash rent is going to be relative to, to whatever area you're at or land ownership costs uh, that you plug in on a per acre basis. So we're just going to use uh, kind of 300 today and I know it's high for some areas and might be a little low unfortunately for other areas. Um, at 300 you know let's say that your your uh, landlord wants to increase your your rent by fifty dollars an acre the important thing to look at is okay we're going to go to three hundred fifty dollars an acre right now we're paying forty seven point three or we're growing forty seven point three bushel an acre to cover that cost we can have a conversation with our landlord and say well now if we do that we need to grow fifty five bushel an acre um, it doesn't mean that you wouldn't do that but it means that you can have that conversation around what what it is you can also look at the margin impact and say well previously at 300 it was 30 you know 33.9 was where my margin is now I'm gonna cut my margin um, you know from 33.9 to 27 percent so it's not that this is a huge deal that you're gonna have a, an increase in cost but it's a conversation point with a, this type of a simple tool that you can have with your landowner the other thing is is looking at cost per bushel and you want to do this on every single line item and we're just picking on land here for a minute but you know how many what's your cost per bushel for that specific line item so in this case at 350 it's 206 you know if we got it back to that 300 you know you want to it's a dollar seventy six so you want to be thinking in terms of how does that impact my price per bushel because we sell grain price per bushel we don't you know we don't sell grain in lump sums and total dollar amounts because when we do that we don't make good decisions we don't understand the implications of exactly where we're at same thing with the taxes in this specific example the property taxes are fifteen cents a bushel it's nice to know that stuff it doesn't mean that it'll necessarily individually change a decision but it gives you additional information in a very simplistic manner um, kind of the same thing with return to management what we want to put in return to management are all of our overhead costs I'm leaving this zero for right now um, we'll come back to this and I'll explain to you how to use this return to management cell but return to management is something that a lot of times we tend to overlook so we'll come back to that in a minute um, interest expense kind of the same thing we look at okay we wrote a check out for thirteen thousand we spent a lot of money on interest but it was only one point nine percent of your total cost of production so not that it isn't a concern or a big deal but looking at these big items as a percent of cost a lot of times those are areas where you can make changes and adjustments that will actually impact your margin or your bottom line um, 
same thing here, crop insurance, I talked about that in the introduction, the importance of understanding the value of a, any particular item, we'll use crop insurance as that example. Um, as a percent of cost, it's 2.8% of, of the cost. Well, understanding that, you know, let's say that you're going to go to a higher level and it's going to go from 25, 75 an acre, it's going to go to, you know, let's make it 36 bucks an acre now. It just increased it, and, and what we tend to do is we're looking at this twenty thousand. So then we say, "Oh man, that's now we got to write a check out for another eight thousand bucks." But keep your eye on this as a percent of cost. Again, the same thing. If you're if you're getting value back from this purchase, and it's protecting, say, from seventy percent to eighty-five percent coverage. As a percent of cost, it's a very high value investment. So you want to be thinking in terms of that. And again, looking at you know how what's the the cost per bushel for this investment? It's 21 cents a bushel. You know, so just understanding what that is and what the change is will allow you then to say, okay, maybe I need to increase my sales, you know, by whatever the change was. So maybe it's a 10 cent increase or a 5 cent increase, whatever the increase is that gets factored into your cost of production, which we'll look at here in a second. Um, as we look through the expenses, and just in the interest of time, I'll speed through some of these, but you know, seed cost, fertilizer, nitrogen, all of these are plugged in on a per acre basis. So what you basically want to do is, when you start the profit manager system, I would recommend uh, plugging these numbers in from a previous year so you have a baseline so you pull out your financials and do the calculations and figure out what your per acre cost on is on each of these line items and then eventually as you get the accurate numbers put in here you know what the costs uh, per bushel are for you you know what the percent of cost is um, you know how many bushels you had to grow to reach that uh, to cover that expense um, the same thing on chemicals herbicides insecticides, fungicides, um, if you have any custom application done, all those numbers are calculated in here. Um, machinery and equipment, um, same thing. You can add in additional expenses here, uh, or if there's operations like uh, irrigation or some other things that aren't listed, um, you can add those here in the other columns and, and factor those expenses in. So that basically what it's doing then, once you get your costs uh, calculated on your machinery and equipment, you've got, again, that as a percent of cost for your total machinery. Um, in this individual's case, their machinery cost is 98 cents a bushel. So again, it's understanding, well, what, how many cents do I got to capture to cover my machinery cost, for example? Uh, machinery is another thing that uh, I think is important to think about, and, and I'll cover machinery at the end of this discussion in more detail, I have a tool on here which will help you calculate individual costs per operation. But it's important to look at fuel, labor, repairs, depreciation, and interest. Those are all the primary expenses that need to be calculated in here. Now what some producers will do who have used this uh, spreadsheet for years will plug in the uh, university averages, and that's fine you can do that. The only challenge I have with doing that is understand that your costs are going to be different than the average of that survey. And so the more accurate you can get these numbers, the better decisions you're going to be able to make. And so that's why I want to uh, take this opportunity here in a couple minutes to show you why and how easy it is to calculate out your equipment cost on a per acre basis and just figure out exactly where you're at uh, so when you're making these decisions um, it'll, it'll equate to a lot more money. Um, as producers, a lot of times what we think about is we look at grain handling and we think in terms of cost per bushel. So let's focus on this for a minute. You know, hauling charge I've got in here at 22 cents, and again, that's relative to areas and how far you're going, but drying expense of 10 cents, and that's relative to the area again, and storage, depending on your operation. But I think what's important is look at this in terms of cost per acre. If your normal cost is 10 cents, you know, over the last five years, and all of a sudden this year we've got corn planted a lot later for whatever reason, and you're looking at now you're going to maybe go to 40 cents, you're thinking in terms of 10 cents going to 40 cents. Well, what does that mean on a per acre expense? That takes it from 17 
to $68 an acre. So it's very important to be thinking about looking at these expenses, not just for how much the check's being written out, but looking at all of these different expenses in terms of, of how is it per acre, how is it per bushel, how is it, you know, from about three different angles, gives you a lot better opportunity to make better decisions. Um, this spreadsheet also breaks out your variable cost per acre, your total uh, cost per acre. And then what we do is we go down here to the two components that make the biggest changes are obviously uh, price and yield. So if we go in here and uh, plug in for 2013, the, the insurance guarantee is 565, so we'll plug that number in. And uh, let's just leave the 170 in there for now as an example. Um, government payments, I've got that at zero. Um, hopefully we see something there, but I highly doubt there'll be anything in there this year. And, and we'll find out, but for now you can leave that blank. And if we do end up having some kind of a number in there, basically um, you just plug in whatever your number is and it automatically gives you a per acre um, value so, so you know where you're at on a particular farm or the whole operation. Um, other income, that would be premiums or any additional revenue or additional crop insurance indemnities that come in uh, that you didn't otherwise have. And, and so if you have uh, some numbers come in there, again, that'll calculate it on a per acre basis and adds to your per bushel price. So, you know, you were at 565, now you're at 568 because of that 45,000. Um, this is also an area where if you capture additional revenue on, on say, on Board of Trade or some, some true hedging that you're doing, capture additional revenue, that revenue would be plugged in uh, to that cell. So then what we do is, is we scroll down and we look at the economic results. The economic results uh, essentially are showing you um, your total overall costs, uh, your cost per acre, and your, your cost per bushel of production. And that number looks fairly high on there, and that's just because of the numbers we have plugged in there right now. Um, we can go back up here and kind of look through and say, well, what, where do we have pretty high numbers in there? And uh, a lot of them are, are kind of up there. Uh, machinery, we've got that one fairly high. Um, I'm seeing those numbers increase quite a bit. Um, so, you know, whatever it is, it is. The other thing, too, that changes, I just took 20 bucks an acre off, and that took it from where it was back to... 563. The other thing that obviously lowers your cost of production, and that's why I, I'm always entertained when I hear someone say, well, I know my cost of production. Well, that's good. We all know our cost of production, but we know it relative to whatever yield projection we have. So, for example, if, if we end up growing 190 bushel corn instead of 170, our cost of production just went down to 510. So, you know, when you look at it before, it was at 563. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of why we're looking at moving targets here. And the more access you have to these kind of tools in a very simplistic way, you can more rapidly make decisions when these government reports come out, change the markets 40 cents one way or the other. Uh, we have dry weather, any kind of uh, Thing that's occurring in our operation that's changing the dynamics of our cost structure, our marketing planning, all of those things uh, we can really quickly look at. Um, one thing I kind of failed at the beginning, I'll just point out here too, when I started, I started kind of here and um, basically this is a corn page. There's a corn page, a soybean page, a wheat page, and an alternate crop page on these tabs on the bottom. So essentially you go in, you plug your name in, you plug in the total acres you farm, and the total acres you farm are tied to that machinery and equipment, so it helps to calculate your a actual cost uh, when you fill the sheet out, and then you plug in your corn acres. Um, kind of the same thing, there's a, a page for soybeans that does the same thing. Plug in your name, your total acres, and then however many acres of soybeans you have. And so you can, each crop you have, and if you have wheat, kind of the same thing, um, and then you just go ahead and fill in uh, your information for uh, cost of production, yield, and price, 
and then you've got the tool to go ahead and work with. Once you fill out this sheet relative to the crop you're analyzing, then you go to the marketing page. The marketing page is pretty critical because what it does is it shows you everything you just filled out on your sheet is, is preloaded in here. So now you can go ahead and say, well, I want to go ahead and market. I've already loaded a, a, a sale in here of 525, 20,000 bushel. That would be in this uh, producer's case, he had 800 acres. That would be a 15% sale. Uh, 25 bushel an acre. So every time you make a sale and you think in terms of 5,000 bushel or 10,000 or 20,000, you want to instantly know what percent of my sale was that. How many um, bushels per acre do I have priced? And then not only do you want to end there, because I know a lot of us already do that, but you want to say, well, what percent of my total expenses in terms of variable costs? In this guy's case, that's 20% of his variable costs. It's 13, almost 14% of his total expenses. Um, you want to understand that because those expenses are moving targets. Keep those updated so when you're looking at your marketing sheet, all of these information pieces are tied together and again in a very simplistic manner so you can look at this uh, data and, and kind of know instantly where you're at. And then you can run scenarios or you can make actual moves. Let's say the market uh, takes off and we get a $6 market and we can go ahead and make another sale you know, let's say we sell, sell another 30,000 bushel. Well, now we're at a 570 average. And by the way, the other thing this is keeping track of, and I may backtrack here again uh, for a moment, but it's keeping track of the percent of insured bushels that you have. So currently we're at 38% of our insured bushels that we have sold. Um, it's also showing you your safe to sell bushels. So your guarantee based on the insured uh, values that I have on the corn page are 60, 161 bushel an acre. So it's keeping track of how many bushels you have left to sell. Um, we'll go back to the corn page for a second and I'll show you. When you're making the decision on crop insurance, this is a great tool to use for the decision making process. Um, but it's also a good tool to have after the fact, once you've gone ahead and made, uh, made this decision on crop insurance, um, you can always come back to this and, and look at it. Again, it's got the percent of cost. I'll get back here. Um, it's got the percent of cost. It was 3.8% based on uh, we paid $36 was what I left in there for the premium. When we talked about that earlier, um, I've got 85%. I've got an APH of 190. And again, that APH is relative to the area, you know, um, and then our spring price. Basically, crop insurance is, is that simple from the standpoint of understanding you know, how much coverage do you really need. In this particular grower situation, his cost to production is $956 an acre. At 85%, he's only, he's, his total coverage that he can get, is he's, his guarantee is $912 an acre. So he's got about $35,000 at risk, essentially. So, you know, you can kind of look at that and say, you know, how much insurance do I need? You know, let's say that, uh, for example, this guy's uh, in an area where he's got a really strong APH and let's give him a 210. Well, now he's got more than enough uh, coverage. His cost of production is 956 and now he's guaranteed 1,000. So um, it, it's just whatever your, your APH is. Maybe your APH is only 120. Um, you know, now your guarantee is, is 576. And before your crop insurance agent shows up, once you know your cost of production, you can run some of these scenarios before the agent shows up and then have a conversation around, you know, how much risk am I really taking and what level of coverage is advantageous for my specific situation based on my cost structure and understanding, you know, the spring price. The other thing is looking at you know, what's the value of the fall option if, if, for example, in 2012, we came back with a $7.50 guarantee. Well, in this guy's case, you know, and, and let's go back to the 190 uh, APH. Um, it went from that 912 that we were looking at in terms of guaranteed coverage to now he's got $1,211 of guarantee. So, you know, it helps you to identify, you know, what what level of coverage you know, really makes sense 
uh, up here and then how much coverage am I, am I going to get. Uh, at the beginning of the year when the spring price is set, it's 565, you just leave that number in there and, and then when we get to fall and get to that October time frame, then, then we would start to change that number and, and have that move uh, as we go forward. So back to the marketing sheet, as I said, you know, every time you make a sale and you look at the price, um, you know, so we sell another 30,000 on a 20 cent rally, now we're 59% sold but that's based on the yield we're thinking about and our guarantee is different. So we've got 61% of our guarantee. So obviously you don't wanna go over that, that level of coverage. Um, but on the other hand, what happens a lot of times is we tend to sell big chunks and as the market goes up, we sell smaller and smaller chunks, partially because we're not looking at this number and we're not necessarily always focused on how many bushels we have left in guarantee. So let's say corn goes to $7, yeah, in, in this guy's case, um, if it goes to $7, we all tend to be inclined to sell smaller amounts now. So, you know, and, and let's say it goes to, to eight, then we, then we even sell uh, smaller amounts, um, put 5,000 in there. So, you know, so now we're looking at an average price of, of 612, 73% is sold here now. Well, if you can kind of see how many bushels you have left, and depending on the timing of the year, if we're getting closer to the end of the year and we know that these levels uh, can be a little higher because we know where our yield is at and we know where our guarantee is, um, we might make a little bit different decisions. Maybe we're a little less aggressive on the front end and a little more aggressive on the back end. It just um, allows you to transparently see what's going on uh, with the with the information. So, so that's the marketing page. Again, uh, there's a soybean page. This is the soybean page that does the same thing. Now that we've kind of looked through the marketing component of this, I think it's important that we uh, look at a couple of other uh, tools on here that are available. Um, I won't go through all of them. There's there's numerous uh, decision. Uh, aids in here but one of the primary ones that I think is very important is to understand your break-even sales price at every yield level and so let's just pick for example uh, 160 we'll use that number and based on the numbers we've got loaded in there right now the break-even sales price is 570 and you know th this these yields you know 2012 we had the drought yields were going down there's been other years when yields are going up and so this is a moving target uh, very important to look at however let's be really careful not to just understand our break-even price let's go back to the corn chart again as I talked about and look at this return to management sell. Now these are overhead expenses, health care costs, family living withdrawals, all of those overhead expenses that we tend to not think about. In addition to, we kind of want to make a profit. So remember that 160 at five, $5.70 a bushel cost production. So let's just plug a number in there. In there. We'll punch in 160. Now when you plug that number in, if this margin drops into the red, you got to go back and say, all right, is, are there some expenses somewhere that are, are too high? Do I need to increase yield? Do I need to increase price? What am I doing to achieve that? Or maybe I have too high of a number here in overhead costs. But in this particular situation, you know, with this guy having uh, 800 acres of corn, he's asking his corn operation um, to essentially give him $128,000 and a 15% uh, rate of return relative to his other expenses. So again, looking at how many bushels do you got to grow, that's 84 cents of margin. So you instantly know what your margin is that you need to capture. But even more importantly than that, let's, uh, let's go back to that chart and look at how we remove emotion and establish discipline. At that 160, now it's 670. So if the yield is going down like we saw in 2012 or going up, the converse is true as well. Um, that essentially was about a dollar of increase um, 
to cover those costs. So now the question is, is, let's say the market's rallying because yields are coming down and you know that you're covering those costs, uh, essentially anything over one or over 670, you're essentially making everything you were hoping to make and that was the established goal for your overall operation and for that enterprise. You got to ask yourself, well, why am I not making sales here if we're at 720 and you still haven't made any sales, this is designed to help discipline kick in. It's, help, it's designed to help remove the emotion, puts numbers in play so you can make, again, better decisions. Uh, again, the same thing is tied in to soybeans. Um, you can look at your break-even sales price at every yield level on that. Uh, the same thing for wheat. Um, another thing to look at is, uh, you know, what tools do you use for understanding your uh, nitrogen rate um, per acre in terms of cost. So there's a little calculator in here. Uh, you just put in your price per ton, uh, the rate of application, and uh, you know what your yield goal is and a few other variables. And then it's going to plug in here what your cost per acre is so that you get an accurate number on your corn page or wheat page uh, relative to your nitrogen costs. Same thing for fertilizer. There's a little fertilizer calculator. Producers, we always think in terms of cost per ton, but really once you know your rate you know what what's the cost per acre instantly and um, knowing that and being able to establish that and plug those accurate numbers in to your overall costs uh, really will help you um, to make better marketing decisions and then there's some other little tools in here for understanding your margin management that um, I'll just kind of they're pretty self-explanatory and so in the interest of time we'll pass on explaining those so what this is then is once you've filled out your sheets and you've analyzed things, you can come in here then also and, and this income and expense summary basically brings all of the data on one page. So you can compare side by side your corn operation to your soybeans to your wheat. It tallies up the total expenses and, and kind of averages those things so you can see where you're at. Uh, another interesting component to the tool is it can help you analyze which system uh, is going to make me more money between corn and beans. Let's uh, go back here just so we can compare apples and apples to the corn and soybeans. And that's the thing you want to be careful of when you're comparing corn and soybeans. Make sure you've got those expense expenses where you're actually comparing apples to apples. You're not doing something too much yield on one versus the other. You know your own operation. You know what your yield capacity is, uh, your five-year average for corn versus soybeans, let's say, for example. Plug those numbers in. Plug your insurance numbers in and see you know, which one's going to give you um, a little higher rate. Right now, we've got 1425 in there in the soybeans. Let's go change that one to the 2012 number. We'll put uh, We'll put 1287 in there, uh, which is the insurance level now this year. And let's say that that's the situation this guy is looking at. So now he's got a 16% or a 17% return opportunity on his corn and a 6% return here. And, and really what you end up wanting to look at is, is that revenue uh, opportunity and how many dollars per acre am I going to make between the two. And then the margin in this comparison is important. Um, but it does come down to revenue and I've seen scenarios where the soybean number is significantly higher. Again, it comes down to, to the yield and price component, these two components. And so, you know, the, the bottom line is just doing a very uh, simplistic but very detailed analysis of your opportunity. Um, one last thing I want to show is the importance and the detail behind understanding your equipment costs. This tool essentially will help you by answering these essentially 16 questions will help you understand what your cost per acre is uh, for any individual pass. And so we have tabs on here for each machine operation. Um, this specific example is of a, a John Deere 8335R and a, and a John Deere 1770NT planter. Um, it's a three-year-old uh, planter. Um, this machine, 100% of it, is going to be uh, ran over the acres that we have included here on this example. I have 2,950 acres on this example. 
um, essentially include all the acres that whatever application you're uh, looking at has the numbers uh, in there. The tractor obviously isn't gonna, is gonna do more things other than plant. And so what you wanna do is plug in again the market value, just like we did with the planter, plug the market value in, and then again the percent of time that that machine is being used in that application. And so either through uh, you know, internal machine, uh, how many hours are being put on the machine, or whatever system you wanna use to analyze the percent of usage, will help you allocate that expense appropriately. So just basically figure out the percent of time that machine's being used, plug that number in. Another important one that's becoming very big is this logistical cost um, in terms of, you know, how many miles are you running with the machinery? We've got some tech fees or some uh, subscription fees for GPS equipment and those sorts of things that add to our bottom line expense on the equipment cost per acre that in a lot of cases we're, we're having a tendency to overlook some of those numbers. I think we want to be real careful to get those numbers, numbers plugged in appropriately. Um, for example, your idle time and your road transportation time, all are expenses that have to be allocated in there. So now that we understand the logistical part, then the next component on eight is to understand how many hours of actual operation you have. So for example, with the planter, it's how many hours that that machine is in the ground moving forward. It becomes extremely difficult to get over about 14 or 15 hours um, if you're running 24 hours a day even because of turnaround time on the ends, um, road time, refill time, downtime, repairs, just all those little items. So, so establishing, you know, what's your realistic uh, operational time, plugging that number in, and then looking at labor cost. Labor cost is an interesting component to your machinery cost that has to be calculated. So for example, if you've got a hired person in there and let's assume that their value is $20 an hour, <clears throat> maybe you're going to jump in there for a day or two and your value is $100 an hour. Um, so let's put that number in there and currently your uh, labor cost at $20 an hour is 67 cents an acre you know, now it's $3.33 an acre. So, I mean, you can, you can kind of go through and look at, at some of these scenarios and understand on a per acre basis what do these expenses really mean. Same thing for fuel. I've got fuel plugged in here at 357 and that moves all over, obviously. Um, based on consumption for this machine, and again, you know, with the monitors we have today, and even if you don't have monitors, it's fairly easy to do a calibration to figure out how much fuel consumption you're using on a per acre basis. Plug that in, you know, per hour and per acre, um, the primary ones per acre, though, of consumption. So let's assume that fuel goes, you know, we've had, we had some of it bought for 357, and right now our fuel cost is 536. So let's say, you know, fuel just went up you know, for whatever reason, now it's at 425. So you can look at it and say, okay, well now we're at 636, you know. So you can quickly do these analysis and, and maybe it'll help you with purchasing fuel too and saying, well, last year we paid this number based on coming back and looking at where you were and knowing what your cost per acre is. Again, will really help uh, with some of those decisions. So getting closer to the end here, one of the most important things um, overall, I think to understand is that when we look at how this value of machinery is, is calculated over an annual period of time, most of the financial inst institutions use 25% of your total investment as the cost for the basic machinery. So for example, we're using 10% uh, 10 opportunity cost or interest expense. Obviously interest rates are not that high right now, but you have opportunity costs with those investments. Um, we've got depreciation at 10%. I'll touch a little bit more on that in a second too. There's more to it than just the 10% and then 5% repairs. If you've got old machinery, your repairs are going to be a little higher, but your depreci and your depreciation is going to be lower. Um, so basically at the end of the day, we end up still at about that 25%. I've spent about 10 years trying to play with uh, other percentages than that 25% and, and it's, it comes out almost exactly every year uh, utilizing that, that number. Um, here you plug in the acres, as I said before, 
um, and then we'll come back to these in a second. But I think what we want to look at then is, is uh, back to the hidden depreciation. Talked about that for a second there, that depreciation was 10%. There's one other layer of depreciation, and, and that comes from replacement value. So you may say, well, I run old machinery and I'm never going to buy brand new. Well, that's fine, but you still will replace that machinery. If you're in a situation in your operation and you're going to be done in five years, then you really don't need to look at hidden depreciation. But if you plan on operating for longer than five years, Hidden depreciation needs to be analyzed constantly in that what you do with this first sale is you call your equipment dealer and you say, what would it cost me, you know, in, in this example I'm using three-year-old machinery, a three-year-old tractor and a three-year-old planter, the current value is, is uh, $216,000. So with that current value at two sixteen. dollars you say, what would it cost to replace that exact same machinery with brand new? And when we did that for this example, the cost was 300000 The next question you ask the uh, machinery supplier is, how much did the machinery go up annually in the last year? So when we asked that question, the average between the tractor and the planter was 4.1%. What this does then is it calculates on a per acre basis what your hidden depreciation is. In other words, your replacement cost. Replacement cost, it's not just the wear, wear and tear on your machinery, but it's also the replacement cost. So in this case, it's a dollar and four cents. What it is for your operation, for your planter, for your field cultivator, for your combine, all of those things would be really good numbers to know so that when you're looking at your operation and you can say, okay, here's my true cost. This guy's case, you know, $18 was what his machinery cost was for his tractor and his planter. But you gotta add in fuel and labor, and so now he's at $24.73. The next question is, is do you do any custom work? If you do some custom work, and even if you don't, a lot of us have close to a million dollars invested in machinery and equipment in our operations, and if, we had that kind of money invested in another business, would we expect some return from that investment over and above whatever we've got the company for? Um, I know one of the arguments I get is that, you know, well, I've got to have the machinery because that's what gets me the yield and everything, and that's fine. But I still think when we look at when we're selling our grain, we want to make sure we have a high enough expense on this cost of production form here, when we go through our machinery and we plug in these equipment costs, we get here, when we plug in these equipment costs here, we want to make sure these numbers are big enough so that our cost of production isn't too low, kind of like I showed on understanding and managing your, your, uh, your return to management. You want to make sure that you don't cut yourself short. If you're going to err, you want to err on the side of having this number probably a little bit too big. And I think we have a tendency to, ha you know, to want to feel good about our machinery and equipment investments and keep that number smaller. So then basically you plug in what percent return do you think is fair for that however many dollars worth of investment you have in total for each of these operations. And for one operation, it might be higher than for another one. You know, maybe with your combine, um, it's 3%, and maybe with your planter, it's 5%. So you just plug in whatever your number is, and, and it'll calculate instantly where you need to be. And it's showing here, too, your, your profit per acre, so you know what you're establishing. A great example of this is, is I just worked with some producers uh, a few days ago that were looking at their harvest cost, and they were doing some custom combining, and they were charging 30 uh, for this number here, they were charging $32 an acre, and we ran through this scenario and found out that their cost was $42 an acre, not $32 an acre. And then once you have this information, it's a lot easier to go and talk to your client that you're doing some custom work for and have a conversation around, well, here's where my rate is and why, the, why my rate's where it is. And we're making these decisions based off of uh, numbers rather than emotion and and the opportunity to work with others is great, um, but I think we want to include as many numbers in this scenario as we can. So 
One other last final tool that is included here too is just taking a look at margin enhancement. When you look at purchasing anything, I think for your operation, particularly for your crop enterprise, you want to plug in the grain price. I've got the guaranteed price in there this year for insurance at 565. Your investment cost um, per acre, I've just got an example of, in, of let's say we're going to buy some GPS equipment. It's going to cost us five bucks an acre. Um, what's the yield enhancement? Well, let's say that it's not going to be five, but we think there's going to be a, a three bushel yield enhancement to, you know, to a variable rate seeding, let's say for an example. Um, now we plug in the acres, let's use the, two, uh, the 2950 that's uh, on this example, plug that number in there, and let's say you know, we're going to use that investment for 10 years. Um, if we're going to do that investment over a 10 year period then, it's taking these numbers and calculating the return to your operation and saying, okay, well that's, a, that's almost a $12 enhancement to our operation. Well that's great. But if you do that over 10 years and you look at the return, there's 352000 But then you look at you know, your interest rate or your opportunity cost on that money over time, and that number can be anything. Again, I've just got 7% in there. You can plug whatever number you want, rule of sevens or less. But you know, there's essentially almost a half a million dollars just by a $5 per acre investment. So, it's again not just looking at how many total dollars are you spending but looking at what kind of return are you getting how do you understand the value within your operation and those sorts of things so um, I guess that's really all I wanted to touch on today just make sure that you had an opportunity to see uh, profit manager what it is how you can use it to improve the decision making in your operation which ultimately that decision making is gonna give you the opportunity to really improve your profitability and and again, I think these margins, uh, we've had some amazing opportunity in crop production the last three to five years. And uh, I think we're going to see some volatility as we move forward the next few years. As that volatility occurs, um, there's going to be challenges, but there'll also be opportunities. And, and the goal here with Profit Manager is to be able to put some light on those opportunities when they occur so that you've got the discipline and you'll take advantage of those opportunities to be as profitable as you can. So I uh, appreciate that. Uh, we'll have some information here on how you can contact me and uh, uh, from there uh, we'll look forward to working with you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.